Today we are looking at a Linux furnace that is uh, having an issue with the flame sensor. It's not detecting that the gas is igniting and thusly it's turning off on safety. The way we can tell that is down at the bottom of the furnace here, there's this little observation hole and if you look in there you see the status LEDs and you can see on mine it is alternating red and green back and forth they go. And if you look on the list, alternating slow flash uh, means Watch guard, burners failed to ignite, or lost flame sense four times in one heating cycle. What that last part means is it tried up to four times to fire up the furnace, and it didn't detect that there was a flame, even if there was, and because of that, it shut off on safety. To resolve that, we need to open up the furnace and take out and clean the flame sensor and then put it back. So start by uh, turning off the power to the furnace. You could shut off the breaker, or if you have a switch at the furnace, that'll do it too. Then we can open up the door. In addition to turning the power off, it's never a bad idea to turn your gas supply off as well. Just in case. Um, shouldn't be any reason that it should kick on, but can't hurt to have an added level of safety there. Now this particular model is a G43UF series. Full number there, G43UF24B04504. Uh, this general information applies to other furnaces, including other manufacturers, but uh, we'll continue here on this furnace to see exactly where the flame sensor is, because on other furnaces it's real easy to get to. On this one it's a little bit of a pain to get to, but we'll get to it, we'll clean it off, and uh, we'll get her back up and running. All right, so on this model furnace, the uh, flame sensor is kind of hiding way back there you see that white wire that kind of disappears up into the nether regions of the furnace with the connector on the end that is where the flame sensor is way up there so we're gonna have to disassemble a couple things to be able to reach up there using a quarter inch socket we've removed the uh, four screws that hold on this plate now this is not entirely necessary to remove but uh, at the same time it'll help us see better as to what we're going for also removed uh, the one screw underneath here in the center That'll allow us to pull this plate out, and again, this is just going to give us a better visual on the inside of the combustion chamber. And you can see in the back left corner with the white sheath, that is the flame sensor directly in front of one of the burners here, and that's what we need to get to. And you can actually see the head of the screw sticking up that is holding it in place. So what we do need to do still is get underneath here to undo that screw and then pull out the flame sensor that's attached to the white wire. The easiest way I've found to access that area to get to the flame sensor is to remove this chunk of tubing and this is all uh, flexible rubber tubing here that just held on with some standard radiator clamps. So we're just going to unscrew all three radiator clamps enough to loosen them and then we should be able to work this whole piece out, shift it off to the side to disconnect it, get the whole piece out and then that gives us a lot more room to get up and under uh, with the screwdriver or the socket to get that screw out that's holding the flame sensor in place. All right, well, with some words of encouragement, we were able to get the uh, rubber piece out. Slipped it off the uh, the middle portion first and then was able to shimmy it left and right to get it off of there. And uh, one of the radiator clamps here, the other one was able just to slide down onto here. That now gives us lots of room. Turn on the light here to get up behind here and ultimately up to where the flame sensor is. Again, just one little screw holding that in. Uh, before we even try to get that, I'm going to call this the aggravation saver here. We're going to close off the top of this with a rag, stuff a rag or a paper towel in there. And the reason for that is in case we drop a socket or a screw, it doesn't go into this motor never to be seen again and cause uh, a lot bigger problems than we have now. So close that off with a rag, and next thing is we're going to use a flexible socket extension to get up there and unscrew the screw that's holding in our flame sensor. And pardon the uh, one-handed, left-handed camera work here, but you can see we've got the flexible socket extension up into place. It's a quarter-inch socket on the end of that, and that's going to be unscrewing our screw that's holding in the flame sensor. So it's going to be a two-handed operation here, but we'll be able to unscrew that and loosen the flame sensor. All right, well, in theory, the flexible socket was going to be the answer, but the uh, screw was so tightly in there that wound up just using the regular socket on an extension here 
uh, just on a handheld screwdriver and was just able to get that behind the gas pipe here and straight up and was able to loosen the screw. You can see, you can just barely see the tip of it now. I'm going to do the rest of it by hand and then the flame sensor will slide right out with it. All right, success. We got the uh, rest of the screw out by hand and uh, literally just going to pull down on the bottom of the flame sensor from underneath here by hand and pull it out of there. And uh, we'll just follow the wire back a little bit to work it out here to get it to actually clean it. All right, and we pull the wire back behind the bundle of wires and we have the flame sensor out now. So if you're going to replace it, you can see there's a clip right on the end and uh, literally just pop that off, pop the new part in place, and you're good to go. Um, in this case, we can actually clean this, and uh, I've actually did clean this a few years ago, and it worked for probably a good three or four years, but it's time to clean it again. If we look closely, try and get the focus here, you can see that there's uh, some burn marks on here and a lot of soot and whatnot. Um, we're just going to use steel wool. Uh, steel wool is recommended or you could also use a very fine grit sandpaper. You don't want to go to town on this. Uh, you don't want to damage the flame sensor. You just want to kind of clean off the gunk that's accumulated on there. So we'll use some steel wool uh, gently on Brilliant. it. I'm taking the steel wool to it. And there are other videos you could watch too about cleaning this. Uh, the focus of this video really more is on how to access it on this particular furnace since it's kind of a bear to get to. But you can see we've uh, cleaned off the, the bulk of the uh, dirt and whatnot. Um, you can wipe it down with a paper towel and then afterwards too just to get any dust off of there. And uh, installation or reinstallation is the uh, exact reverse of what we did. We're going to pop it back in there, put the screw in place, um, and then put everything back together. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully this helped you and uh, good luck with your repairs.